Welcome to our third video of our complex numbers series in our maths module. So for this episode we're going to be looking at argon diagrams. I've given ourselves a few different complex numbers here written in different ways and we're going to first start by plotting these on an argon diagram and I'll be showing you how to do that. So first we'll address some of the argon diagram that this is our real axis here and this up here is our imaginary axis up there. So we're going to plot our first one. So these are, think of plotting this on these, you can ignore the i and think of this as x and y coordinates where i as the imaginary is in the y and the real is in the x. So for the x we'll go across to 3, 1, 2, 3 and for the imaginary 1, 2, up, just there. So we can plot our point here and what we actually do is we draw a line straight from the origin going to our point there. For our next one we have minus 1 in the x and we have 3 in the y so our point is just here and again from the origin and up and finally we just have 4i. We have no z, we have no x component, we have no real component and you can be given a number like that. We know when we write our answers down we are always given the same form but your numbers can be given to you like this. So for this one our point there would just be 1, 2, 3, 4 down so it will be down here and the line goes up there. So there are our points Z3, Z1 and Z2. Now there's another way we can represent these because at the moment these are being given by basically an x part and a y part. So we're going to address something now which we call polar coordinates. So what we're going to look at, first we'll look at our z1 and a polar coordinate basically tells us that we can give this a value which describes everything we need to know about z1 from some things which are r and our angle theta. So r is the length here which is equal to our magnitude. So we know how to calculate our magnitude. So our magnitude of z is equal to r. And our angle theta is our angle up to when we get to our number. Now we always go anti-clockwise around and we always give the positive. You may have been shown before to give you the smallest value, so if you're somewhere here or to say for Z3 you go negative round, which would be negative 90 degrees, but instead positive round to 270 degrees. So to calculate theta then, it depends on which section of the graph you're in, but simply for Z1 we can do the Y component which is 2 divided by 3 and this is equal to tan of our angle so that means our angle theta is equal to inverse of tan or arc tan as it's also called by 2 over 3 2 thirds and that will give us our angle just there. And that's how we can work that out. For Z2, if we're working out the angle for that, sorry for Z2, for our angle, we can now look and say we can use the same thing for tan minus 1. So theta 2 equals tan minus 1 and we have we'll just take the magnitude of each of these we have 3 over 1 but that will give us our angle here that gives an angle here say phi so what we do is we take 180 minus this and as we go around what we can see is we can do for we'll split the graph 
into sections, section one, section two, section three, section four, much like when we're using the graph of a unit circle in trigonometry. And for the first section, our angles, I'll just do here, our first section is just tan to the minus one of our y part or our imaginary part over our real part, which is our x part. For our second part, it's 180 minus this up here, our tan to the minus one, blah, blah, blah. For our next, it's 180 plus our tangent to the minus one and everything else in the brackets. And finally, we do 360 minus tan to the minus one of our y over our x. Now you can do it by keeping the signs and punching it into your calculator that way. But doing it this way originally helps you remember whereabouts they are on the graph and it's a way to sort of enhance your thinking of the graphs as you're doing it. So in our next video we're going to have a look at why polar coordinates will be a, u a useful way to represent them and how we will actually represent our numbers in polar coordinates.